Hello, and welcome to The Post Workshop. If you're new to this channel, we produce instructional videos to help you strengthen your film and video post-production skills. Today, I'll be walking you through the process of creating and organizing a project inside of Avid Media Composer, the most professional editing system available today. This is an introductory video, so if you've never used Media Composer before, you have found a great place to start learning this incredible software. Okay, let's launch Avid Media Composer. I am recording this demo on a Windows 10 workstation, but if you're using a Mac, then I will be pointing out the minor differences between the two platforms as we go. As the software launches, it performs a variety of checks and handshakes with your hardware, drivers, peripherals, and such, just to make sure everything is good to go. As you can see, I am running Media Composer Ultimate, 2018.12.2, which is the current release as of this March 2019 recording. This is a good time to mention the options you have when acquiring your own copy of Media Composer. Here we are on Avid's website, where we can see Media Composer First, Media Composer, and Media Composer Ultimate. For the purposes of this video, Everything I'm going to cover applies to both Media Composer and Ultimate. If you don't already have a license for the software, there is an option to download a free trial. Now, if you are currently a student or a teacher, Avid offers some very generous educational discounts. When I was a film student, I took advantage of this, and I'm very glad that I did. If you qualify, I would highly recommend it. If you are using the free but still very capable first option, the major difference between what I'm showing you here and what you will have available in your software is the initial project setup is simplified to help you get up and running as fast as possible. With that being said, if you're interested in tutorials specifically for Media Composer first, please let me know in the comments below and I will consider making some first demos just for you. Once Media Composer loads, you are presented with the Select Project dialog box. It's used to locate existing projects and create new ones. Starting at the top, we have the user that is associated with the operating system of this computer. Usually this is referred to as the OS user. This is followed by the Avid user menu. In Media Composer, User profiles are used to customize the application to best fit your needs and preferences. They can even be transferred from one system to another. The section below tells Media Composer where to look for existing projects. Projects saved to the private location are only available to the OS user that is currently logged into the computer. Projects that are saved to the shared location will be available to all users of this computer. The external radio button gives you the flexibility to store a project anywhere on your system, including but not limited to external drives, network drives, and servers. By external, Avid means anywhere outside the standard private and shared directories. Any file location that your operating system recognizes can be accessed by clicking the folder browse button below. This is how you control where the external option looks for Media Composer projects. The section below lists all the projects in the location that you have specified above. If it is empty, like it is now, that only means there are no Media Composer projects in that location. If a project is selected, then its formatting information is displayed to the right. To create a new project, click the New Project button above. Here we can name our project. I will go with the Post Workshop Demo and select its format right here. 
As you can see, there are a plethora of choices ranging from standard definition to HD, UHD, 2, 4, 8, and even 16K. Within each of these sizes, there are a variety of frame rates to choose from. Which do you choose? Generally, you want to choose a format and frame rate that matches the majority of your footage. This will allow Media Composer to work with it natively, which means it will be less taxing on your system and result in better performance. But if a specific delivery format is required, or you are dealing with footage from a wide variety of formats and frame rates, you might want to set the delivery format up front and then transcode the source material to match. Transcoding can be done within Media Composer or third-party tools. If there's enough interest in transcoding specifically, it will be covered in future videos. Again, let me know in the comments below. For now, let's focus on the project's format. A very important note about frame rates within Media Composer. Once the project's frame rate is set, it cannot be changed. So be sure your frame rate is set to what your project requires. Frame rates are one of the few formatting options that cannot be changed later. In this case, I'm going to choose 1080p at 23976 frames per second. The rest of these options below will update to match the formatting options that you have selected. You will probably want to leave these settings alone unless you have a specific reason to change them. Click OK. The project is created and will appear in the Select Project dialog. If you need to delete a project, you can do so by selecting it and pressing the forward delete key. Not backspace, but forward delete, which on a full-size keyboard is usually grouped with the home and end keys. You will be asked if you're sure, and if you are, press OK. And that project is gone. Not sent to the recycling bin on a PC or trash on a Mac, but gone forever. So it should go without saying, be extra careful when deleting projects. I would like to start with a new empty project, so I will create another one. New project, give it a name, select or confirm its format, click OK to create the project, open the project by clicking OK. Now we have a brand new project loaded into Avid Media Composer. What we're looking at now is called the Source Record Editing Workspace, which is named after these two monitors source on the left and record on the right. Together, they make up the composer window. Now, before I go any further, if your workspace doesn't look like mine, go to the Windows menu, Workspaces, and select Source Record Editing. If it still doesn't look like mine, go to Windows, Workspaces, and this time, Restore current to default. Media Composer will ask you, are you sure? Press OK. And you should be good to go. Of course, depending on the size and number of monitors that you have, your workspace might not look exactly like mine, but the general layout of the windows should be close. Workspaces are a great way to customize Media Composer to the way you like to work and the specific task at hand. Future videos will explore workspaces in greater detail, but as a starting point, let's orient ourselves to the default source record editing workspace. Returning to the composer window, as you remember, we have the source monitor on the left and the record monitor on the right. As the names imply, the source monitor is used to work with source material and the record monitor displays sequence material from the timeline below. Now, this may not look like much of a timeline right now. It's uh, quite empty. That's because we have not yet ingested any media or created sequences for our project. Once we take those steps, the timeline will begin to take shape in this window. To the left, we have the source browser window. This window is used to load media into your project, ingest. I will be coming back to this in our next video, where we will be discussing various strategies to ingest media for your project. Above that, we have the default bin that was automatically created. Bins are storage containers for all of your project's media and sequences. The term bin 
comes from the containers that were used to hang and organize strips of film back in the days when it was physically cut and spliced to create edits. Bins must be open to work with the assets inside, and all assets must be kept in bins. To rename a bin, create new bins, and organize your bins, we move over to the project window. To rename a bin, simply click anywhere in the bin's name and type. To create a new bin, click the new bin button above. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, Control N on a PC, Command N on a Mac, and type its name. Now you can see we're creating a little bit of a mess over here with all the bin windows layering on top of one another. One way to clean this up is to take the bins tab, drag it into the other bin, just like a web browser. Another way is to go back to your project window, Control A on a PC, Command A on a Mac to select all the bins, then right click on any of the bin icons and select open selected bins in one window. Now we have a single tabbed bin window that can be moved around, resized, and reorganized. To close a single bin, just press the X. To close all of the bins in this window, press the Windows X. Pretty straightforward. Now let's say you have another bin that contains assets that are very different from the other three. It can be helpful to create folders by selecting the project window, clicking the Fast menu, also known as the Hamburger, and selecting New Folder. Rename the folder, just like any bin. Select the bins you want, and drag them into the folder. You can also create folders by right-clicking anywhere in the project window and selecting that option from the menu. There are a few rules to understand. Folders can live inside of folders, but folders cannot live inside of bins. And bins cannot live inside of other bins. The software simply won't allow you to do that. I think it's easiest to remember that bins hold project assets and folders organize bins. To delete folders and or bins, simply select them, right click and choose delete selected items or press the delete key. This sends the items to the trash. If you are absolutely 117% certain that you no longer need what is in the trash, then and only then can you empty it by clicking the fast menu or right-clicking within the project window and selecting that option. Now, the project window does a lot more than manage bins and folders. Avid likes to describe it as the central hub for your project. In fact, if you close it, the entire project saves and closes. That also brings to a close this demo. We have obviously just begun to scratch the surface of what can be done in Media Composer, but I hope this brief introduction has helped you become more comfortable with creating and organizing projects in the software. If you have questions or suggestions for future videos, please don't hesitate to reach out in the comments below. I will personally respond to all serious questions and comments. In our next video, we will be picking up where this one left off. I will be discussing different strategies for ingesting media into your projects, which will lay the groundwork for a deeper exploration of working with bins and creating sequences. If you found this video helpful and would like to learn more, please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. Thanks for watching, and I wish you the very best with all of your post-production projects. Thank you.